Drivers, start your engines. Under clear and sunny skies, Saturday, July 27th, was cast at Speedway was humming. Not just from the roar of race cars whizzing around the track, but also with cheers and celebration for the track's 50th birthday. The day saw the Speedway's inaugural Hall of Fame class inducted, as 13 key contributors to the track's success over the years were enshrined forever. Three of the inductees, Teddy Polino, Dave St. Clair, and Doug Ripley, have ties to the Midcoast, as they had, and in St. Clair's case, continue to have successful careers. Well, it means a lot. I mean, it, I got inducted into the main Motorsports Hall of Fame last year and uh, didn't really have a lot to say because it kind of, I didn't know what to say. I guess I'd never been here before. I, I don't know what to say now except for, I want to thank everybody and my wife, my children, and my grandchildren and great grandchildren have all supported me in racing. They don't really want me to race, but they haven't. They haven't put me to rest yet, but they'd like to. It's really, really exciting. I never believed I'd ever going to get there. I thought I should be, but I'm here now. It's quite an honor. It's great to be recognized for things that you do, you know, no matter what you do. It's nice to be recognized for it. With our Hall of Fame committee, we met several times over the winter, and one of the main things we needed to dig into was the criteria of what it, what it, we wanted our inaugural class to be, and and we wanted a group of individuals who had lasting impact on the success specifically of Wiscasset Speedway. Uh, there are drivers who will be in our Hall of Fame someday um, that have Hall of Fame level success at tracks throughout the state, but we really wanted to concentrate on drivers, staff members, contributors, pioneers that, that had a, a big impact specifically on this track. So uh, I think our committee did a really good job and we've got a good cross section of what's made this track successful. 72-year-old Dave Boss Hogg St. Clair continues to make laps around the track in the Pro Stock Division. The new Hall of Famer once owned Wiscasset Speedway, purchasing the track in 1991 and selling it in 2007 with his wife Sandra. St. Clair won a championship in 2003, made history as he raced alongside his son and grandson at one point, and captured his most recent victory in 2016 at the age of 69. I don't know, I just like to drive. I, I, I still think I can do it. I haven't won a race since 16. I won two that year, and then I got in a bad wreck, and then I got cancer last year. I had to take the year off, but I'm better shape than I've been 10 years right now, and I'm looking forward to tonight. Well, I, I didn't drive much when I owned the track. My son did and my grandchildren, but I didn't drive much. It's a, We always had a pretty good following, and I raced in other tracks, but I didn't do a lot here. It was a, it was different. A lot of things happened. The lights would go out or the sewer would get plugged. Uh, you know, there was always something happening and you had to entertain the crowd. I mean, we had a rain out one day and we had some extra trophies and there was a big pond in the infield and I got the trophies on the other side of the pond and said, the first ones to get across, get a trophy. And the kids come and run and fell in the water and had a good time, but we got through it. Ripley raced on main racetracks for 47 years, as he captured three championships with his third coming in 1983 at Wiscasset Speedway. Then I won the, then I won the uh, late model championship here in 83, and uh, we had struck the wall down here, put me in the hospital, broke my jaw, damaged kidney, side head injury, unconscious 14 hours. I hit that wall up Unity 10 years before that. Bill Jones got into me there, one-eyed Jones, and, and put me in the wall. Six more days I spent in the hospital. Then uh, in 2001, yeah, I won the championship here in my flagpole car. In 2002, I won another championship. Ripley amassed 75 career wins around the state. Ripley also raced with his three sons at one point and now watches his grandson Ryan make laps. Pretty special. I know this means a lot to him, and he was quite a driver. Got to see a lot of it, and I know he's touched a lot of people around here. So he was quite the interesting driver. Not, he didn't uh, let too many people pick on him. Polino captured three titles and had 70 career victories, including 18 in a row spanning the 1973 and 74 seasons. Polino also won a 100-lap race at Unity Raceway, beating NASCAR legend Bobby Allison. It didn't set in, I don't think, until about a year of my, uh, that winner, you know, that we won 18 races in a row. Uh, I drove for Neil Rennie, and he knew it. He was he was really, really proud of it. And it was quite a feat now that I think back on it. I mean, I don't know of anybody that's won 18 races in a row. Neil and I were one of the first ones that really started maintaining hobby cars. 
I mean, most people would bring their cat, and I did it first. We would go in, race, take it home, pack it. Next week, load it up, bring it back. But there were some weak points in cars. One of the things that we kept an eye was like the timing chain would break. And there was a pin in the rear end that held the spider gears together, and that pin would wear. And we always would, every week, we'd, we'd, take, we'd take the rear end apart every week and check that. But the timing chain, we'd go maybe three or four races, we'd just automatically change it. So, so we didn't have any breakdowns. You know, that's one way to win 18 races in a row. A large crowd gathered for racing that evening as Pro Stocks, Thunder 4 Minis, 4-cylinder Pro, and Super Streets took to the asphalt. Dan Trask captured the win in Super Streets with Jefferson's Mike Hodgkins finishing second. Jeff Prindle won in four-cylinder pro, while Curtis Anderson won in Thunder 4 Minis. Chess Williams of Hope finished eighth. The night was capped off by a 50-lap pro stock event as Kevin Douglas was first to cross the finish line when the checkered flag waved in the number 18. Thomaston's Rodney Brooks finished sixth. St. Clair had a tough night at the track, though. The 72-year-old crashed in the last lap of the first Pro Stock heat in Turn 2 to begin the night, but bounced back and finished 10th in the main event. Half a century has seen many changes come to us cast at Speedway, but every weekend it roars to life just as loud and proud as it always has.